When I was young, I really liked uh, some sports, like softball, and uh, I was the catcher and the first base uh, player. And I also liked music. I started playing um, the flute in the fourth grade, and from there um, I played in the, in the band, and I had branched out and taught myself uh, tenor saxophone and played that in the jazz band, and I was um, in the marching band and the symphonic band. Um, and I was a drum major and uh, lots of different activities with, with music, it was great. In high school there were some elective classes that we needed to take and um, my mom was helping me fi figure out which ones to pick. And she had, um, she had gone back to school while I was a kid and she had taken a programming class and she had suggested that um, I, I took one of those to see if I liked it. And so that's how I got into, um, and I already like computers, I love playing with them. I remember um, my parents getting our first computer. It was an old <laughs> uh, 286, and um, it was just something that was at that point a toy, but then learning how to program a computer was, was really interesting to me. And so I started taking computer classes in ninth grade and all through high school. Yeah, I majored in computer science in the liberal arts school and got a bachelor of science, and I also did a minor um, in mathematics. I got, a, I got a master's and a PhD from uh, UC Berkeley, and my master's was in computational um, geometry, and my thesis was on um, physically-based simulation um, for creating uh, crack patterns on surfaces. So like mud drying, I also looked at crackle glass, and so that's a, a, a way to create crack patterns in, in class as, and use that for like cups and, and bowls and things like that. Uh, in my internship, I ended up working on a inverse kinematics problem with uh, Andy Wicken, who was my mentor in the research group. Let's pretend my, I want to animate my arm, and uh, I would want to grab my wrist and move it here. And what inverse kinematics does is it would solve to figure out what are the angles that I'd have to move my elbow joint and my shoulder joint to hit the target, which is where my wrist is. Really exciting for me um, to watch the finished movie for Brave. I worked on a lot of the technology that was used um, to animate the characters and to do the hair simulator. I, I wrote the um, inverse kinematic system that was used to, to move the horses and move the, the, the humans and um, I spent a lot of time trying to make sure that posing tool was right and having that and have Merida's hair fill up the entire screen was incredibly satisfying and to see how, how beautiful it all turned out. And while I was writing those, those tools, I got scheduled to do an interview um, with, uh, with another coworker for the simulation group because they were looking for a new simulation person. And the person who had left had done um, uh, fluids and other types of simulation work that um, wasn't an area that I was familiar with, so I hadn't even thought about this, this, work, this, this job opening. And I, I think it had been open for about a year when we were, when we were um, talking about it. They were having a hard time filling this position. And um, the person we were interviewing was doing a master's thesis, and he was implementing some of my PhD thesis. And so after the interview, my coworker said, he turned to me and said, why aren't you applying for this job? And um, that was a really a point in my career to really sit and think like, huh, why aren't I reply applying for this job? And so, um, so I really gave it some con consideration and um, decided like, yeah, I do want to apply for this job. And it's always a little bit scary when you try to do something new, but um, you know, it, it was definitely worth it. I didn't listen to the people that were saying like, oh, you know, you should be doing this instead because you should do what your heart tells you and um, even if it's scary, you should go ahead and do it.